part of the build-up to the final rounds of Mars One's astronaut selection process, the organisation has begun releasing a series of video profiles of some of the remaining 100 candidates. The first two videos in this series have now been released and feature American candidates Dan Carey and Sonia Van Meter, with more to follow in due course. To produce this series, Mars One worked with film crews around the world over the past eight months or so, with the broad aim of showcasing who the Mars 100 are to the wider public. Now, if you're interested in learning more about how Mars One's selection process works and what will be involved in the training, Mars One released a book on February 23rd to explore these questions and many other interesting topics. Entitled Mars One, Humanity's Next Great Adventure, the book consists of a series of essays exploring the human aspects of Mars One's mission, written by advisors to the project and edited by Dr. Norbert Kraft and Drs. Ray and James Cass, who are part of Mars One's selection committee. Now, since the psychological aspects of human Mars missions are relevant to any proposed mission, not just to Mars One's model, this informative compendium of expert views should be of use to anyone interested in human spaceflight. Now, I'll certainly be releasing my own review of the book in the near future, but in the meantime, if you'd like to find out more about it, you'll find the relevant links down in the description. Mars One have also been stepping up their public engagement on the technical front this past month with the publication of four new articles over on the Mars Exchange. The first two focus on addressing public questions concerning the growing of food on Mars, conjured by a team of ecologists and crop scientists over at Wageningen University. Whilst the second two articles are interviews with the CEO and also the chief engineer of the Paragon Space Development Corporation, with the first focusing on the environmental control and life support system, and the second focusing on the broader question of the technical feasibility and challenges ahead for Mars One. These articles are joined by a video question and answer session I held with the chief engineer of Paragon, which you can watch just over there, in which I put to him a series of questions that you sent in to me over the past month. And if you want to check out the articles themselves over on the Mars Exchange, you'll find them down below. Now, as always, I'd like to offer a quick summary of some of the activities the Mars 100 have been involved in around the world over the past month. First up, for this month's education and outreach highlight, I'd like to introduce you to Christian Knudsen, a systems engineer representing Denmark in Mars One's selection process. Christian has been involved in a number of educational events for children surrounding Mars exploration recently, with one quite recent example being working with a group of scouts in Denmark to distill water, build basic rockets, and pilot drones and then drive rovers, as well as a number of other interesting educational activities. And also in Europe, I do have to give a special shout out to Spanish candidate Angel Jane, who has been involved in a number of television interviews recently, with one example in the Catalan language included down in the description. If we now cross over the Mediterranean and stop by in Egypt, Mido Salam, the only Arab remaining in Mars One's selection process, has embarked on a tour around Egypt this past month, delivering TEDx talks. This is part of his own self-described bid to rekindle the excitement for space and astronomy that can be traced back to antiquity in Egypt. Meanwhile, down in South Africa, Dr. Adriana Marais has been continuing her work delivering talks in schools and most recently has been involved in a student tour of the South African Large Telescope in Sutherland. Let's take the plunge down under now and stop by in Australia, where there was a surge of media interest surrounding Mars One this past month, following Josh Richards' five-day Mars simulation habitat mission to promote the release of The Martian on DVD. During his time in the habitat, Josh engaged in a number of video conferences with students to explore aspects of human missions to Mars and to answer their questions surrounding human spaceflight and about pursuing careers in science and engineering. 
Now, this desire to inspire young people to pursue careers in science, technology, engineering, and maths is certainly shared amongst the Mars 100, with one recent prominent example being American candidate Yari Rodriguez, who took part in a camp recently in Massachusetts to encourage girls to pursue careers in STEM fields. I'll also be delivering a number of public talks over the next month or so, as I've been invited to speak at the World of Business Congress in the Netherlands on March 30th, as well as at the Edinburgh International Science Festival on the 1st and 2nd of April. In particular, the event on April 2nd will revolve around a discussion surrounding all aspects of terraforming between myself, Dr. Louisa Preston, an astrobiologist, and Dr. Jill Stewart, a space law expert, which is going to make for a fascinating discussion, I'm sure. This does mean, though, that unfortunately I will be otherwise occupied at the time that I was intending to release my next Mars One Update video, so that will be coming out the following week on April 9th. Finally, in case you aren't aware, I started hosting interactive live streams on this channel to coincide with each SpaceX launch. During these streams, I offer commentary and background information before and after the official SpaceX live stream, as well as answering your questions live on the air on any and all space-related topics. This worked really well for the recent SES-9 launch, despite the number of launch aborts and hence having to reschedule the live stream three times. And I'm really looking forward to doing this again for the next SpaceX launch, which will mark the return to flight of the Dragon capsule resupplying the International Space Station, which is currently scheduled for March 30th. So I will be promoting each of these live streams 24 hours before the scheduled launch time on my channel page, which is where you'll be able to find the link to join. So I hope to see you there and to answer your questions. Thanks for watching. If you're new to this channel, I produce monthly updates on the Mars One project on the first Saturday of each month, as well as explorations in planetary science, astrophysics, and human spaceflight. This month's featured video is a recent conversation between Apollo 11 astronaut Buzz Aldrin and physicist Brian Cox. I'd also like to give a special shout out this month to Jay Choi, who created the extended animation that has been featured in my live streams. Next week, I'll finally be releasing the first part in my video series on Kepler's laws of planetary motion. But in the meantime, you can follow me on Twitter, subscribe, and comment down below to join the conversation.